What's up guys, welcome back to the KLX build series. This is part two. Today, I think we're gonna install a snorkel because that's easy, that takes less than five minutes. And probably do the EJK. So just in case you missed the last video, if you did, I'll have that link down in the description, but we installed the FMF Megabomb header, the heat shield, the O2 eliminator block off right there, and of course the O2 eliminator sensor. We have the side plastics off there, the seat off right there, and for today we're going to have to take the fuel tank off. You don't have to take the fuel tank off for the EJK, you just have to get to the fuel injector so you don't have to take it all the way off but it's gonna be easier because I'm gonna be doing some of the smog stuff and for that it's gonna be a lot easier with the fuel tank off but if you're not doing the smog stuff you can just uh, flip the fuel tank out of the way so yeah let's go ahead and get into the video part two of the KLX build series EJK and the snorkel all right so we're gonna go ahead and start with the snorkel I'm gonna take the lid off. These are 10 millimeters. They don't really require any force at all. Oh yeah, weirdly enough, I ordered one O2 bypass and I was afraid that it wasn't gonna get here in time. So I ordered another one and got it rushed. So there I had two bypasses now, the EJK said that it didn't come with an O2 bypass, but it does. So, I have two extra O2 bypasses. Alright, look at this restrictive snorkel here. So, let's go ahead and pop that out. There we go. Gee, look how much that's restricted. They have this whole opening, and they just decide to plug it up. Jeez. KDX will work a lot better. Lots of airflow. There we go. Loads of airflow now. So go ahead and slide this back in here. And bolt her back up. So I'd say it's a good about quarter of an inch. Maybe close to half an inch of an opening. So a lot more air more power. Don't want to make these too tight. They are on plastic after all. So to get to the fuel tank, I've got to take the front plastics off. First bolt going to be this one here and it is also an eight millimeter the bigger fuel tank bolts here are 10 millimeters so yeah there's these little bolts right here 10 millimeter and it appears that it's the only two bolts that are holding on the fuel tank. All right. And we are free. Looks like we're being held back by some smog equipment. So, Let me think here for a second. Alright, so there are some smog stuff in the way, but I am gonna work around them and save that for the smog video. 
but some of it does need to be loosened up in order to be able to remove the fuel tank. So that's what I'm gonna do. I ended up just turning the fuel tank out of the way. I'll talk about this later, but in the smog video, but there's two hoses right here that you need to disconnect, which is related to the smog system. But right now I'm just gonna be doing the EJK stuff and then next video I will go in depth with the smog stuff. As you can see, I have the EJK right here on the right side of the air box. I'm gonna put some double-sided tape to hold that in place there. And then I ran the wires under the subframe here and I'm gonna connect everything up front here, which I'll show you guys in a second. But I just figured I'd show you guys how I'm gonna mount it. I saw this on a forum and I figured that it's pretty useful. So there's that. And then I'm gonna put this on right there. And the EJK is also water resistant. So, should be good in terms of water and whatnot. The next step, I'm gonna undo the ground, which is right there, those gold wires and that bolt. And I'm gonna take the ground here that is connected to the EJK. I'm gonna put it on that bolt right there. This ground bolt is also an eight millimeter. Seems that Kawasaki likes eight millimeters. All right, got that ground off. Now, easy, just put it back on. All right, that's tight. Now we just gotta do the injector and we should be good to go. All right guys, so now that we got the ground here, the next step is just to unplug the stock connector right here. Plug in that connector to the EJK connector right here. And then plug in the EJK fuel connector to the bike fuel injector. So again, on the good camera, we plug in from the EJK its fuel injector connector to the bike. And then the bike's fuel injector connector to the EJK connector. This is the bike fuel connector right here by my finger tapping right there. That is what EJK tells you to plug into the bike's connector. And then the EJK connector just goes straight to the bike. So now it says to check proper installation, you should try to start the bike. The LED should scroll green from left to right and back for a couple seconds. Then the display should go one are two solid green LEDs or very slow blinking LEDs. This indicates proper insulation. So everything is connected, fuel is connected. Should be good to start it up now and make sure that it was installed properly. Ignition on. All right, there we go. So it looks like we did it correctly. Now that the EJK is installed, I'm gonna go ahead and start the bike up and record the stock setting 
or at least with what the EJK came with just as safekeeping and just in case I need them for whatever reason. All right guys, so now I'm just gonna tidy up my wiring here with the zip ties they gave me and that should wrap up the video. All right guys, that is gonna be the end of this video, that EJK and the Snorkel install. I hope I was able to give some insight as to how to install it and uh, was clear in the way I explained it. So if you enjoyed, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, share the video to someone who may enjoy it or may find it useful. Subscribe if you are not to follow the KLX build. Be sure to stay tuned for the next video, which should be the last install video, which is the smog delete. And with all that being said, join the club and I'll see you in the next one. Ah! I stand 10 toes down. AK47 with a